assignment and uh, as you know you should deliver the, this one by next week or by Wednesday morning next week and then I will uh, uh, evaluate it and, and give you some feedback uh, well at least at lat latest during that the coming uh, weekend and this is also uh, will count for for 10 percent of the final grade in the course and uh, problem one we have looked at that uh, earlier this is a uh, EOQ problem and when you have a fixed or deterministic uh, demand so I will not say much more on that problem. Problem two is regarding the uncertain demand the models we have seen uh, in the latest uh, lectures uh, and then A describe each of these models both the newsboy model and the lot size reorder point model the two different stochastic uh, or uncertain models we have seen and the point out the differences and in which situations they should be used um, and well try to not have to write very much but, but try to point out the main differences and, and describe very shortly uh, about the methods and, and when they should be used uh, problem B is a typical <coughs> newsboy problem uh, here we have a special monthly magazine and then of course the periods are months instead of days but the uh, well the situation will will be the same a monthly magazine will also have a uh, a single period for sales and when the new issue will uh, come then you will probably not be able to sell the uh, the previous one uh, here you have a probability which is equal and you can you will sell either one uh, two, three, and up to 20. Probability will be the same for each of these possibilities. You have 20 different probabilities and 5% uh, or 20 different uh, si situations or uh, uh, outcomes and 5% probability for each of them. The purchase price is 3. The sales price is 8. And also here, the store has an agreement with a second-hand store that buys unsold magazines. Magazines might be a slightly different than newspapers. They could be interested even if you are not reading the, uh, the newest issue. So this uh, store, secondhand store, will buy one dollar for each. But then, of course, you will lose money for those magazines which is bought and not sold during the period and then resold for one, one dollar. So you will lose the difference between the purchase price and the uh, salvage value of, of one dollar. So here decide how many magazines should the store buy of each issue and use the normal, uh, use the, the newsboy uh, model, newsboy problem. Uh, and here it is a discrete demand. You know the exact probability for each of the 20 outcomes. So then you ha don't have to use the normal distribution but rather use the exact probabilities as you can find here and find the cumulative probability of buying uh, or selling at least each of the possible numbers between 1 and 20. Problem C is a QR problem just like we saw in the previous uh, uh, well, uh, 15 minutes ago because here they also distribute a city guidebook which is a more uh, well continuous uh, 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 product which can be sold is not uh, restricted to a certain period and uh, here you are given a purchase cost of six you have a lead time of three months and you will also reckon for an annual interest rate of 20 percent and estimate a cost of four dollars for a lost sale if the guidebook is requested when there are auto stock so then you have a given cost here, a penalty cost, which is $4. The expense of placing an order is set to $10, the ordering cost. Demand can vary, but the average during a three-month period has been calculated to 125. And then the three-month period is then, of course, the same as the lead time. And then the demand can be described by a normal distribution and a standard deviation of 15. So now find the optimal value of the lot size and the reorder point in this situation. And all data 
are given here. So we should read the text very thorough and find the values of the parameters and solve the QR model and find the optimal combination of Q and R. And then we will also look at the third problem, which is about lot sizing, which is not presented yet. Uh, this is described in chapter 7 in the textbook. And I will not be able today to go through all the theory. So I have to postpone something uh, to next week. But I will go now directly to the different models that we can use to solve these types of problems. And this is uh, the so-called lot sizing problem. Uh, shortly, you can describe this as here you have 10 different weeks. You have a known requirement, but variable. You can see that you need 30 items in week one, 12 items in week two, 74 in week three. So you have a very high deviation here, but it's not stochastic. It's not uncertain. It is known. You know exactly what you need in these weeks here. And that can be according to a production plan. Uh, this can be found by using the so-called MRP, Material Requirements uh, Planning uh, Strategy, which, we, which is described in Chapter 7 and we will come back to next, uh, next week. But here we should, uh, at least today, we will present the different method of solving this problem when you have a known but variable demand for each of the coming periods. In this time, 10 periods. Uh, we are also given information here that you have a setup cost or ordering cost, which is 100. And you have a storage cost of 5%. Uh, or, or, or not percent, but 0 0.5 of the currency per unit per week. And here, if you are storing one item from one week to the next, you have a cost of 0.5. Uh, and of course, if you are storing from one week to week one to week three, you have 0 0.5 per unit per week, which will be a total of one if you are storing for two weeks, and so on, continue. First, solve this problem in Lingo, because this is also a problem that can be described as an LP problem, optimization problem, and solved to optimality. If you know the exact values, you can solve these to optimality, which can be uh, proved as the optimal, the best solution for this particular problem. But then we also have some so-called heuristics or rules of thumb, which can be used because sometimes you, you are not able to, uh, you are not able to, or you have some some uncertainties. So solving to optimality is not. Uh, uh, it's not necessarily the, the, the correct because you don't know. There might be uncertainties in the different costs here, for example. And then finding the exact optimal solution uh, might not, uh, for, for a given values here, values here, might not be the correct uh, solution if the values are uncertain. And then one can rather use what we call the heuristics which is some rule of thumbs, which also usually will give a very good uh, solution. First, the so-called silver meal heuristic. Then, the part period balancing technique, also a heuristic, different ways of determining a policy to solve this lot sizing problem. Then, in problem D, compare the results of the three different techniques. First, the LP, or the optimal solution formed by Lingo, then the silver mill solution, and then the part period balancing solution. Compare them and comment on the solution. And then the last question here, E, assume now that you have a production capacity in any period which is limited to a maximal production amount of 100. What changes does this piece of information induce to the optimal solution from A? Then back to Lingo put in some new restrictions, which here is a maximal production of 100 and solve to optimality with these new restrictions. And at last, what happens if the maximal production is 40? So first try to solve with a maximum production each week of 100 and then with a maximum production of 40. 
So this is the third problem in your assignment and we will now look at different strategies for lot sizing and then we will come back next week to the theory on the so-called MRP, the material requirements planning strategy which is uh, well this requirement uh, list of, of requirement here can be a result of such, uh, such a technique. But the theory we'll come back to later because to solve the problem we need to know about the different heuristics here. So let's now look at this problem. I we can still we can look at the lot sizing problem for the um, for the um, uh, from the assignment uh, as an example first when we are describing this because here we have the demand for 10 different weeks we want to determine which week should we produce or order and which week should we not produce or order because we uh, we well we can we can produce or order in week one and then store to week two three and so on we have the extreme strategies also here, which we can say that the lot for lot strategy also called the L for L, lot for lot, which means that you have setup cost. If let, let's now assume that we have a production situation, which we, is said here, you have a producer and if we are producing this product, we want 30 items in week one. We want 30, uh, 12 items in week two, 74 in week three, and so on. If we are producing exactly what we need in each week, we will have setup costs in all these 10 weeks, but no hauling cost. Because hauling costs or storage costs are uh, calculated when you are storing from one period to the next. It's not calculated when you are using the uh, requirement within, uh, within the same week. So a lot for lot strategy will be the number of weeks or number of periods multiplied by the setup cost of K. And in this example, this is quite easy. 10 periods, a set of cost of 100. Which is a total of 1,000. So here, if you are using the lot for lot strategy, you will have a cost of 1,000. You will have a setup in week one, setup in week two, setup in week three, setup in week four, and so on. This is the one extreme strategy. The other extreme strategy is called order once or produce once. Then you have to count the total demand for all the periods in the time horizon. 30 plus 12 plus 74 plus 11 plus 24, 42, 35, 30, 75 and 68 sum of the demand and produce all in period one which means that you have the setup cost only once okay but now you have to add the holding cost and i have not well i'm not calculating everything here but uh, if let's assume that the sum here is 500, for example, which probably is not true, but anyway, let's assume that. Uh, and if we have a total requirement of 500 producing everything in week one, then you have to store 12 of them in one period to a cost of 0 0.5. We have to store 75 of them in two periods. They are produced in week one and they are consumed in week three. That means that you have two periods to a cost of 0 0.5 and 74 items. And you have 11 in week four. And also with this strategy, the produce once, 
These are also produced in week one, so they have to be stored in three periods, and so on. In period 10, you have a requirement of 68. They are also produced in week one, and they have to be stored in nine weeks. So nine times the storage cost per week. And this is, in uh, this case, and also quite often, this is very expensive. So I don't remember the exact values here, but we can multiply by uh, infinite or something. Very, very high value, much higher than 1,000. So here, the lot for lot strategy is, uh, uh, is, more, uh, is a better strategy than the produce once, but you have some combinations or some uh, solutions between these extremes. For example, we can produce 42 in week number one, store 12 of them to week number two. We can produce 85 in week number three and store 11 to week number four. We can produce 66 in week five and store 42 for week six. We can produce 140 in week seven, store 30 in one week and 75 in one week and produce 68 in week 10. For example, this would be a better solution probably uh, than both the lot for lot strategy and the produce once strategy. And now we will look at different heuristics. First silver mill heuristics, which is a quite well known heuristics for such lot sizing problems, which can be used to find out which periods should we produce and which periods should we not produce and use what is uh, actually produced earlier. <coughs> so, let's now look at the silver mill heuristic, which is probably the, the best known of, of these methods. Well, it was well, defined at some time by two mathematicians, Silver and Mill. And the idea here for this uh, heuristic is to determine the average cost per period as a function of the number of periods in th that the current order is to span. So we have to try to check what will the cost be if we are now in period number one and ordering for one period. What will the cost be if we are ordering or producing for two periods? What will the cost be if you're producing for three periods and so on? And when the average cost is increasing, we are stopping. So let's look at this one. The C will now be the cost and the C of T will be the cost for producing for a certain number of periods, which means the C of 1 is equal to k. k is the setup cost. The c of 2, we are talking about the average cost. Of course, we could divide k by 1, but still we will have left with, with k. If we are producing for two periods, we will have the setup cost, k, plus the holding cost multiplied by what we call here the R2, which is the requirement in period number two from the setup period. And since it's the average, we have to divide by two. Similar, the CO3, the cost of producing for three periods, we will still have the setup cost, the K. We still have the H multiplied by R2, if we are producing or setting a setup production in week one, we still have to store 12 in one week until the next week. But also we have to store 74 in our example to the week number three. From week one to week three will be two weeks. So here, H multiplied by two multiplied by R3. And since we are talking about the average, we can divide by 3. And let's now try to 
define the general formula here for the silver meal method, the C of T. We'll now, no, let's not use T, let's use J as the index will be in this case. It will be K, the setup cost, plus the holding cost multiplied by R2 plus two times the holding cost multiplied by R3 plus and continuous until the last element of this series which is J minus 1 if J is 4 then you are looking at period or week number 4 and you're storing for 4 minus 1 you're producing in week 1 and you are consuming in week 4 so J minus 1 will in this case be 3 you're storing for 3 weeks multiplied by H and multiplied by R J as the general formula and to take the average divide by J the number of periods this is the general formula for the silver meal uh, heuristic which also is shown here for the first three uh, periods uh, this is a heuristic which is so-called myopic it's only looking one period ahead every time so we are now standing in period number one and first looking at period two then period three then period four and so on so it's not always returning the exact optimal solution but it will usually be able to find a pretty good solution we can also describe let's see i think i have that somewhere the silver meal formula can also be described in another way which is the cost for a certain time period when you are looking at the previous time period so let's know j plus 1 which will be equal to j divided by j plus 1 so if you know the value of the cost for three periods you can easily calculate the cost for four periods by using this formula j divided by j plus 1 3 divided by 4 in the small example multiplied by c the cost for j the cost for 4 plus the holding cost of the new requirement or the requirement for the new period r of j plus 1 so this is another way to calculate the cost for a certain number of periods instead of using the full formula here. If you know the previous value, you can easily um, extend to the next value by using the formula up here. So these are the values for the formulas for the silver meal technique. And now let's look at uh, another, a smaller example than uh, what you should uh, solve in uh, should solve in, in your assignment. Yeah, we can have this one up now. And uh, here is also the formula for the silver meal. We, well, we will next week we will also see how we can apply or adjust the EOQ formula uh, to solve the same problem, but this is uh, well, uh, usually not uh, that good of a heuristic like this silver meal is. So let's now look at a small example also for taken from the textbook where you have the R for five periods, which is uh, yeah, example 7.3 in the textbook, it's the periods of 18, 
30, 42, 5, and 20. This is the requirements for five coming weeks. We are also given a K value, a setup cost of 80, and a holding cost, which is two per week. Storing one item from one week to the next week, it will cost you two of the given currency. So let's now try to use this formulas here and calculate the cost for the given number of periods. The cost of one will be have a setup cost in week number one and produce only 18 items in that week. So C of 1 will be 18. C of 2 will be the next alternative, still looking from um, week number 1, but now we want to produce for week number 1 and week number 2. A total of 48 Um, yeah, of course, I'm totally wrong here because the C01 will be the setup cost, not the R1. The setup cost is 80. If you are producing in week number one, you have a setup cost of 80. If you are producing in week number one for two periods, you still have the setup cost, but you also have holding cost two for 30 items. You are producing 48 and 30 of them are stored to the next period. 30 multiplied by 2 and to take the average divide by 2 and we will find an average value which is 70. 80 plus 60, 140 divided by 2 is 70 which on average is smaller than the previous alternative. So then let's now look at number period number three. Uh, producing 18 plus 30 plus 42 will be 90 in week number one, storing 30 to week number two and 42 to week number three will give you a cost, a setup cost of 80, holding cost of 30 multiplied by 2, and then 42 multiplied by the holding cost of 2 and multiplied by 2 periods, divided by 3. The average will be, of course, divided, formed by dividing by the number of periods. And this gives us a cost of 102.67. And this value is higher than the previous value, which means we want to find, look forward from the period we are starting in and find out how many periods should we produce for to have the lowest average cost. And in this case, it will be produced for two periods because 70 is smaller than 80 and 102.67. So here, the optimal, or not maybe not optimal, but the, the solution here will be, let's call that the silver meal solution, will be in period one, produce 48 and store 30 of them to the next period. And then, of course, you should not have production in period number two. But now we need to continue from period number three. We have decided what to do in the first two periods. We know that we have to have a setup in period number three, but still we will decide how many items should we produce in this period. So we just continue from that. And now C01 will be a setup in period number three.
setup in period number three still only producing for one period will give us a cost of 80, the setup cost. Producing for two periods will give us the setup cost of 80 plus holding cost of two multiplied by the number of items to store to the next period, which here is only five, and divided by two to get the average, which is uh, 45. 45 smaller than 80. So let's now continue and check what will happen to the average cost if we from period number three are producing both for period four and period five, which now will be for three full periods. Still setup cost of 80, holding cost two multiplied by five for one period, and the holding cost of two for 20 items in two periods. Two times two times 20 divided by three, <coughs> which is 56.7 if you calculate this expression here. Like this. And again, this value is higher than this value. That means we should stop here. Or we should only produce for two periods. So in period number three, produce 42 plus five, which is 47. No production in period four. And then we only have one option left because the time horizon is only five periods. So we need to produce 20 in period number five. And then we can try to find the cost of this strategy. We, this is the, now the production, if we also want to look at the stock. We know that here we have, we are producing 48, we are using 18 and we are storing 30. So here we have a stock of 30 in the first period. In the second period, we are using all these 30, so then we have nothing. In the third period, we are producing 47. We are using 42 and storing 5. In the fourth period, we are using the remaining 5. And in the fifth period, we are producing 20, and we have a demand of 20, so then the stock will also be zero. So to find the cost here, cost of the silver mill strategy. We have to find the number of setups, one, two, and three, multiplied by the setup cost of 80, plus the sum of all the periods of the storage, or the stock of all the periods, 30, plus 5, plus 0, 0, 0, which is 35, multiplied by the holding cost, storing from one period to the next, which was given to be 2. 3 times 80 should be 240, 35, 35 times 2 is 70, uh, which is a total cost of 320 which we should try to remember. Because now we have the silver meal strategy. By using the silver meal strategy, we have found a solution for the lot sizing problem, which is different than the lot for lot strategy, which we saw first. Finding the cost of a lot for lot strategy is quite easy. We have five periods and five times setup for all periods if you are producing exactly what we need in all periods will be 5 times 80, which is 40, uh, 400. Sorry. So the silver mill solution has a cost of 310. The lot for lot solution will have a cost of 400. And we could also try to calculate the produce one 
um, solution, which means that you are producing uh, all items in the first uh, period and storing to the next one. Uh, but then you will have a very high holding cost, and this will not be a very good solution. I don't have the exact uh, values here, but you should uh, try to, to calculate also the uh, the value of the solution where you are producing 115 in period number one, storing 30 in one period, 42 in two periods, 5 in three periods, and 20 in four periods. Find the total cost for the produce one strategy. Excuse me. Yep. In this example here, the silver mill solution, yep. if you had produced those 20 units, Units yeah. in the first period, yeah. you would have had a holding cost of exactly 80. Yeah. It's the same as the set of costs. Yeah. We will look at other. The yeah, you can find. Yeah. If you produced it in the third That's right. Or in the last period. That's right. And we will look at other uh, methods too, and where that is probably what we will find out. Because we will look at different heuristics, and heuristics don't necessarily return the best possible solution. If you have an LP program sold to, optim uh, to the optimal value, you can find a proven optimal solution. But heuristics are used as uh, rules of, of thumb. And here we have a solution, which is, of course, much better than the extreme strategies, but not necessarily the best one, or, or at least not necessarily the, the, the only best one. There might be others, like you co correct uh, point out. So here, but anyway, we have found a solution by using the silver meal technique, which looks like this, which has a cost of 310. And then we will look at some other heuristics, which might end up with different solutions. I think we take a break now, and then I will continue with two other solutions and also show how this can be uh, formulated and solved to, uh, to the optimal uh, solution in, uh, as an LP problem.